Hi folks, it's David again here to explain how to configure a CropLink device for remote pump control. When a CropLink is correctly associated with a pump via Field Commander, Commander VP, or an ICOM link, the subscription fee is waived for that CropLink. That can save you hundreds of dollars in year one, so I hope you're paying attention now. And I'll explain this a little later. Now before we begin, the device will need to be moved from your dealer's page to your customer account. The dealer will configure the crop link for you online by using its unique serial number and then verifying the GPS location of the device. Once it appears properly on your page, we are ready to get started. The CropLink Pro comes standard with four control relays. One relay can be linked to each pump. This means that once you've linked your device with an icon link, Commander VP or Field Commander, your crop link can provide remote control and monitoring functionality for up to four pumps. So first, we log into our account on the AgSense user site and verify that our devices are communicating and powered up. A green icon indicates the device is running White indicates the device is powered but idle, and red means the device is powered off. Click on the crop link, and then click on the config tab, and look for the num link field. This is where you will type the number of pivots that you wish to associate with your crop link. Now press enter. As you do, you'll see fields appear based on the number that you entered. In this case, we entered one, so one field appears. We'll now need to type one serial number for the pivot that we wish to associate with and press enter. In this case, we are associating an icon link enabled panel at the pivot. In short, we must link the serial numbers of any field commander, icon link, or commander VP in the crop link config settings to enable remote features. For everything to work properly, there must be a number entered in the FC link box with linked serial numbers to your other devices. When it's properly linked, your CropLink subscription will be free. Next, scroll down to Relays and change the drop-down field to read Enable. You are also given the option to rename your relay to something more identifiable, such as North Pivot. Type the name you like next to the Relay1 alias and press Enter. Now below the alias, you'll see five checkboxes with options to choose to help determine how your crop link will function. Normal is used most often. Select this option to have your relay turn on and stay on until another command is sent to turn it off. This choice is commonly used for electric wells or motors. Momentary will energize the relay for 10 seconds and then revert back to off. This is a common option for gasoline or diesel powered engines. Continuous radio com is used with remote units featuring a radio card that relies on another radio unit with a modem to send data. So if this box is checked and your unit loses communications with its associated device, the relay will turn off. Disable is for relays that are not being used. So selecting this will cause the relay not to appear on the command screen. On off opposite creates a relay state to work the opposite of normal state, meaning the relay will stay off until a command is sent to turn it back on. Next, you have the option to establish delay timer minutes. This feature allows us to select a delay of one to five minutes before turning the relay back on after it's been turned off. So let's say, for example, that you have selected five minutes. If the system is running and then you send an off command followed immediately by an on command, the system stops, but an internal timer forces a five minute delay before turning the relay back on. So this feature helps minimize shocks that can occur and cause water hammering and potential pipe bursts. We've completed our list, so click Send Config at the bottom of the page to save your picks and finish setting up your crop link. The next step is to select the device being controlled by your crop link. 
Under the CMD or Command tab, you should now see a Remote Pump button. Select this. You should see a drop-down list next to each relay that is enabled. Select the option you would like and click the Update button. The relays will display the names that you picked back on the CropLink's Config tab, so the relay options are Manual, Auto Off, or Full Auto. Manual, the CropLink relay must be manually turned on or off. Auto Off, the CropLink relay will have to be manually turned on to start the pivot. So if safety drops on the pivot, CropLink relay will shut off automatically. Full Auto, the CropLink relay will reference pivot safety to turn on or off. You're now ready to start and stop your pivot and pump remotely. If your remote pump is set to full auto, you need only start or stop the pivot and the pump will automatically turn on or off. If it is set to manual, you can simply select the pump tab on the icon link to turn the relay on and off. The pump tab will display the crop links alias. There are many positive results of remote pump management fewer trips to the field, flow and pressure monitoring, and more precise fertigation and chemigation applications are all good reasons. The CropLink allows you to take a customized approach to meet your specific needs. Watch for additional videos in this series to help you see how simple and effective remote management of your irrigation can be.